certain affinity welcomes you to another Forge tutorial. This week I'm going over what I like to call progressive extraction. That is, when a site is extracted, different parts of the base will appear. We've touched on this briefly in the past, but this will be a bit more detailed breakdown of how it works. As you can see, after Alpha is extracted, these gravity lifts appear to let you get to Site B. And then when Site B is extracted, this bridge will appear, we can make it all the way across. Then with the bridge there, we have this totally indestructible wall you could definitely not melee through. So let's go ahead and drop a rocket launcher by extracting Site C. Extraction. And then when we extract Site D, we'll get a sweet mongoose and a gravity zone in order to make this jump across the chasm. Extracted Delta. Next point wins. So all this can be done just using extraction sites. And we're going to go into Forge to show you how it's all done. So now that we're in Forge, just take a look at how it's all set up. We won't be covering how to set up extraction sites since the setup is identical to what we showed in our extraction tutorial. We'll link the tutorial at the end of the video. The first element we had up here was these gravity lifts. As you can see, they're placed inside this glass. I pull one out to show you how they work. Note that the spawn time setting is set to 1. I'll cover that in a moment. For now, let's take a look at Advanced. The reason this works is because we've assigned the game type label EXT Target to the gravity lifts. Anything marked EXT target will only appear when the associated extraction site becomes available. As you can see, the spawn sequence is set to 2, which makes it linked to site B. The game type I'm using will only have one site available at a time, so when site A is detonated, site B becomes available, and anything labeled EXT target will spawn in. In this case, place to start setting doesn't matter since the EXT target label overrides it. And I've set game specific to true so that these are only visible in extraction. Moving on, we use the same technique to spawn in the structure pieces to create a bridge to Site-C. The settings are the exact same here. The reason the spawn time is set to 1 for all these objects is because if you're standing too close to an object as it spawns, it will not appear. By setting the spawn time to 1, the piece will come in shortly after as long as no one is standing directly next to the piece. And of course, since the corridors are intended to appear when Site-C becomes available, the spawn sequence for both pieces is set to 3. The rest of the objects are all set up identically to these. Spawn time is 1, the EXT target label is set, game specific set to true, and the spawn sequence is set to correspond with the next site in the chain. While this technique will not work on respawn zones, it will work on just about everything else. In the sample map, we used a wide variety of object types. Gravity lifts, structure pieces, weapons, vehicles, and a gravity volume. We'll be out of the studio for the next couple weeks to celebrate the holidays. Thank you all for watching and commenting our videos this year. We look forward to picking you up right back in January. If you have any video requests or questions, please leave them in the comments. We love making videos based off viewer requests. From all of us a certain affinity to all of you, have a happy holidays and... Forge on!